Sex change is a process of changing genders. This can be seen across all domains of vertebrates. Whether a vertebrate is born with both male and female reproductive systems, known as hermaphrodites, or they are intersexual, meaning they change from either a female to a male or a male to a female. Among humans, sex change can be pricey and painful. However, the sex change phenomenon in vertebrates is a natural and common process. Sex change is primarily observed in aquatic life. Amphiprionae, Myrnidae, and Gobidae species are model organisms used when looking at this sex change phenomenon. This video will discuss further in depth how sex change is observed within species as well as the change of the reproductive system. There are two different types of hermaphroditic fish species. There are the simultaneous species in which both male and female X and Y chromosomes are present. Then there's the sequential hermaphrodite where a species changes from either female to male or male to female. Simultaneous hermaphrodites are seen within many of the sex changing organisms. These organisms have advantages in reproduction due to the ability to mate with both males and females. Sequential hermaphrodites have a larger and more complex form of reproduction as they change from one sex to another. This can be beneficial when species loss situations are present. When faced with a shortage of one sex, species are able to undergo a short process in order to change sex. Sequential hermaphrodites are categorized into two, protandry, the change of males to females, and protogeny, the change of sex from females to males. Amphipyronase form a symbiotic mutualism with sea anemones. These anemone fish are usually orange or yellow in color and have white and black markings. The largest anemone fish can reach up to 16 centimeters in length and the smallest can become 7 to 8 centimeters. These fish are native to warm waters and live within the shallow seas in sheltered reefs. Amphipyronine, commonly known as clownfish, are the model organism when learning and understanding protogeny sex change. Clownfish live in complete hierarchy, where the dominant species is normally the largest and is always female. The second in charge in this hierarchical system is always a non-dominant breeding male, followed by undifferentiated fish. When a fish is born, it is always born as a male. In any clownfish community, the largest dominant member is always female. The second largest is the breeding male, and the rest of the system are sexually immature male followers. The process of sex change occurs when the female is removed out of the system due to injury or death. The breeding male will begin to assume the female dominant position. When the breeding male assumes the leader position, it undergoes the change from the male to the female. Finally, one of the sexually immature males assumes the position of the second largest breeding male. When this happens, the female and breeding male will reproduce, creating more undifferentiable offsprings. This change happens through the brain, which interprets the environmental social change. Clownfish have both testicular tissue as well as ovarian tissue, and it is just a matter of change to encourage the other tissues to develop. Some of the suspected signals used in order for the ovarian tissue to develop include olfactory, vision, and sound. Clownfish have both testicular tissue as well as ovarian tissue, and it's just a matter of time to encourage the non-dominant tissue to develop. Some of the suspected signals used in order for the ovarian tissue to develop include olfactory, vision, and sound. The testing to the ovarian tissue change happens through the hypothalamus of the male in the area of the brain. This is the result of the communication process with the pituitary gland below the brain. The pituitary gland releases a hormone known as gonadotropin releasing hormone in the blood. These hormones are released from the gonadotropin releasing neuron within the hypothalamus which communicate to the gonads, releasing the luteinizing hormone and follicle-stimulating hormone, which are stimulated by the gonads. This causes testes to absorb and the ovaries to develop, resulting in the change of the morphology to completely reverse the behaviors from the male to becoming this new female. The new female now becomes the leader of its school, and this process will reoccur again and again when the hierarchical leader passes. After finding out that clownfish are one of the most studied species when observing sex change, you may begin to wonder about Disney's Pixar's Finding Nemo. Is Nemo's dad really his dad, or did he become Nemo's mom?